Uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. My name is Karuna and I'd like to welcome you all to the first session of Performance as Resistance in Digital Spaces. Just a few introductions before we begin today. Zuban is a feminist publishing house and NGO that chronicles and participates in women's movements in India and South Asia. We are conducting this webinar as part of Zuban's Stepping Stones and Body of Evidence projects. Stepping Stones, supported by IDRC and implemented jointly by Zuban in India and Panos South Asia in Nepal, and Body of Evidence, supported by Gathe Institute, Max Müller Bhavan, build on Zuban and IDRC's sexual violence and impunity project and aim to take its work further through creative forms like art, poetry, and theater. Together, we explore what exactly impunity is, how it plays out in the medical and legal systems, and how we uphold it in our everyday lives. You can find out more about this project via the link in the chat box. Under these projects, we've worked with 27 artists, poets, theater activists and collectives across India and Nepal to create performances, engage in dialogues, and produce artwork to initiate important and often uncomfortable conversations about sexual violence and impunity. These collaborations have also resulted in the creation of a collective feminist project called the Alphabet of Violence and Resistance in India and Nepal. Illustrated by artists across India and Nepal, it focuses on impunity through various lenses and looks at the lived realities of Dalit, queer, Northeastern, Kashmiri artists, and so on. The series hopes to continue these conversations in the times to come. You can view both set of alphabets via the link in the chat box below. This webinar series in particular aims to continue conversations on countering sexual violence and impunity through art, poetry, and theater in the digital space. It is a series of discussions in two parts centered around the effect the pandemic has had on the field of performing arts and how the potential of virtual spaces in creating platforms to talk about existing new and rising forms of sexual violence and impunity. Today's session will feature performers under our Stepping Stones and Body of Evidence projects, and they will be discussing these and other issues, including how the personal is political, especially when it comes to basing performances of deeply personal experiences and using this as a medium to come to terms with pain and trauma and also to have conversations about this. I will now introduce our speakers for today. Akancha Karki is a theater practitioner and a mental health advocate based in Kathmandu, Nepal. She runs a collective called Katha Ghera and she will also be moderating today's session. Abigail Longsage is a graduate of Media Technologies from St. Anthony's College and is a graphic designer based in Shillong. Clyde Thangui is an experimental visual artist from Shillong and is involved in videography, conceptual photography, and illustration. Laptyang Siem is a performer based in Shillong. Her focus is on writing and devising performances by drawing on content from Khasi folk narratives and placing them in a contemporary context. Rangchirik Marak is a graduate in media technologies from St. Anthony's College and is an artist based in Shillong. Shilok is a marriage of celebration and destruction. She is an independent performing artist and a writer. Her works are mostly on the subjects of gender and sexuality. Word Warriors are a Kathmandu-based group of young poets leading the spoken word movements in Nepal. Pragati Parajuli is an 18-year-old spoken word poet who writes and performs in the hopes of expressing herself and giving a voice to stories that go unheard. Surendra Joshi is a spoken word poet and artist from Kathmandu. Yashasvi Karki is an 18-year-old spoken word poet who is trying to figure out ways to express herself through poetry. Now that the introductions are done, I would briefly like to go over the ground rules for the participants attending today. Thank you all for being here. Your video and audio have automatically been turned off on entry. Please do continue to keep them turned off. Audience questions will be taken via the chat box, how, which we will close once we get a certain number of questions that can be answered today. However, the raise hand function will be available throughout. So if you have any queries, you can direct them towards the host, either me or anyone else who has Zuban in their names. We will start dealing with the questions around 4.45 p.m. And if there's any speaker in particular you'd like to direct your question towards, please make sure you mention that as well. 
The discussion will be recorded and posted online via all our social media channels. The list of participants will not be available. Entry has been moderated to guard against trolling. No hate speech targeting or discriminating against any community will be tolerated. And any participants using such speech will be removed from the webinar immediately without warning. The speakers have given prior consent to be quoted outside of this webinar, so you are allowed to do so. To begin the session, we're going to start with a poem by Surendra titled Mungro. The poem is in Nepali and translations will be provided in the chat box. Surendra, on to you. Thank you, Karuna. Uh, sound is clear. The title of poem is Mungro. Uh, in English, it means gavel. Uh, uh, it is object, uh, an Indian object poem. Ma Mungro, Kasele Kothur Banaiko Kartko Mungro. Arik Patak Yodesko Adalat Maza was subtitit Yamada, order, 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 Azidar Bundi, Pazari Kuns, Kartka at a car block. Motokini block Ruire Kunsa, Aparad has your bizarre night, it's useless. Tarama Mostatsu, Yodesko Arik Zilla Utsadalat Mamoza Stay Mungraguts, Zosai Kahatli Ami Surachit Posikatsu. Sarvotchako Mungrama, Mirukam Ali Tore Unsa, Moto Powerful Rahist Pustas Chu. Mamanda Body Vesta Ali Kamzo Utsara Zilamasa. Edikune Avas de Habonda Vaina Banimiru Kams Lunz. My late Zosaika Hatka Reka, Rukoli Saman Dekino, Zosaika Aula, Rukapiko Koili Dekino. Munasaka Mahali Malai Bolio Banairakno, Bolia Banikamani Sang of Botan Botata Gornu Baikusa. Tesaili Partek Potaki Odalas. Posni Dokama, Pardan Mantila, Ekon Rutsa, Kaika, Matrakui, Adalat, Posni Dokama, Mukma, Tiploga, and Vivastagori, Dinostaki, Mali, Operat, Songra Chans of Stoprat, Gorna Batarukinapa. So they say Kura Gorna Pong, the Komzur, Banika, Kosela, Sozilo, and Kosela, and I did not such a Kitab and Kitab Katara, Padara, was an Jun Raki Kun, Timaraki Kunaji Kurakma, Ranga Hinsinuni, Dulam Mitsinuni, Jati Kitsinuni, Unko cover Haseko just to Matra de Kinsa, Uni Vitraka Ochera, Ru Dorayeka of Tiponza, Rusa Statesan, Alanta Ika Rasto Dirgoko Masusaina, Haseko just to Matra de Kinsa Zibonsan Uni Vitraka, Hale Ochera, Dere Dara Padara, Hare Kratani, Hare Din Chapter Raisa, Sana Dara Padara, Lasnani Patra, Satsumo de Raisa, Hale Ochera. Mata Mungro, Mataikum, as a bully print, Sosto Voya, the Selar, Hare, Mirtura, Andolan Postat, Naya Naya Nia Marut Sapinson, Puna Biswas, Udo, it's Hapahanaka Santa, like Lai, Nepal, Punaya, no note, Pani Urin Savane. Bakchai Gang, Galida Samas could be swast to Kanun Kokita Banda Bodisa. The Selikor Samas, Sarkar, Hizo de Kiaz, Sama Balatkar, Kokarovar, Gordesara to Karavar, Kopran to Eknam Mulo. एक दिन किताब रोई ना सुना धारी बोलीं प्रहरी को पावर मा होनु परनी तर उसले बलिया मान इसले आपु शिरमान होना बलिया बनाए का अक्षर मात्रे तेसेले थाना मा कुने महिला हिंसा बलात्कार का गुना सोए वनी कपड़ा लामो छोटर मेकअप को चर्चा चर्चा सायद अपराध नामक नाटक का बाजार व्यवस्था पर कनी कलाकार तीने हुन Kibas Agi, top on the point, top of this Sirman Lafne Sirmati Lai Balat Gargati, Balat Garko Sajako Niam Tapida, Nadi Sarlapani Kumaso to Jacob theory. Saitine, when you Savako Saja, Bokechama, Nai Kupagadi Kasi Balatkari Urkaireka, Mali Huru. Harik Sanzo Uni Runsin, Bansin, Runsin, Bansin, Runsin, Bansin, Enir de Mungru, Emira Oxer Costito, Vandatimi Sakti Salito, Titsa Miru Torreco Bolli, Samadi Chutaiko Santa Taco Chetropal, Niam Mati Comero Hasna Mazalia, Sayaka, Nitar Lai Samas, Bate Bonico Sarkarli, Mahabio Putno, Toyar, Hikotio, Ekmatro, Mahila Pordan, Nadis to Silla Karki, like Karan Hurmade, Karan Tio, Mainako Bolatkar, Potsi Hatama, Exonica, only Jivan Varpitama to Niki. Tivella Mobihal, Vayafne of Terror, like Sarah Betty. Tivella Moli Ekpatak Matri, Dekikoti, Kunama, Taraju, Matiraka, Bondagariki, Lady Justice Life. In Yuda Munro Kuli de Unkaka, Hino de Danda in Tasiko, Asiasi Jibro Katiko. Over the Yudeska Harik Patrakar, Sampada Kaki Burma, Bolatkar, Ukuvari, sub the recent use mouse. Google Mag Ukwari Lehda Gulia Udena Balatkar on Saharik Mila Ukwari Sunda Saskins in the Stolaksa, the Kau Parte Samata, Zaha Dunda in the Hasekota Balatkar, Natikota, and he pulls in Kimiri Rashtopati and it's Hapnu Pordena, Nirmalaka, Din Panet. Thank you. 
Thank you, Surendra. That was a really relevant poem given the time that we're living right now, and especially um, all that we are going through, especially in Nepal in the last uh, one and a half, two months in, in terms of justice system. And of course, like in places like India and all over the world as well. Uh, thank you, Zuban, for this platform and this uh, and, uh, and our introductions. And uh, we're really glad to be a part of this project. So we'll just begin today. We don't have much time. So we have to kind of like put everything in a very short uh, amount of time. So I would like to first start with Shilok, one of the performers. And I would want to ask Shilok, uh, uh, to just like briefly describe what her performance, what, what, what the performance was about and uh, while and what what it took in creating it. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Akansha. Um, so, um, well, uh, my performance is a very personal testimonial of my own life and um, well, um, I actually never planned to do so because I wasn't, when the project began, I wasn't really ready to talk about it. And though I have been into therapy or many things, but um, I kind of uh, wasn't sure or, or ready to, um, you know, talk about it uh, with a larger audience. And which was very, uh, it, it was always being personal. Um, but then, um, uh, when uh, I was asked to present my work and I really uh, felt this, um, you know, energy to talk about the story and I did and it kind of worked. Um, so that's how it began. So my performance, if um, people who haven't watched it, so it has a five different, um, you know, testimonials from my own life, uh, encountering sexual harassment in, um, in different uh, age. Um, so uh, there is this uh, on first uh, p uh, you know uh, the part is about uh, you know uh, uh, when I was uh, four years old. Um, so uh, there is this dialogue where I uh, where uh, one of the audience will read mine is different and uh, hers is different. So and also there is a dialogue where I question people. I was a little boy at that point of time and um, it was a small girl who did this was it, is it a sexual harassment um, and I questioned them and I find it quite, quite powerful and and then the second part is about um, where one of the cousin um, you know tried to harass me at the age of um, 10 when I was 10 so um, and there is a situation where, where um, you know I put up over the stage where my dad is sitting right next to me and I'm just lying down and I um, talk about I ask him father do you see this do you see this his hands is right here are you blind um, so that is also one of the important, um, you know, um, uh, aspect where uh, most of the when uh, a male body or a boy is being sexually harassed and it has always been ignored or not noticed and it raises several questions. And um, and there is also one of the uh, very important part in this piece where um, I talk about the sex reassignment surgery, which I went through, and and also talking about um, you know uh, about how vagina is very costly, and um, and how this body is so proud to break virginity of it, as it is the costliest vagina, and kind of where I have given birth to myself, but um, and I. Also, the last part of this piece, uh, Unraping Silence, um, spe uh, you know, talk about a very important aspect of self rape which is not much spoken. So basically, um, when you're in relationship, um, just to not to, uh, you know, upset your partner, you just allow him to do it. So it's kind of like, you know, you allow it because you don't want any fight with your partner or something. So um, I think which has not been spoken and it is kind of like, you know, for me, it is a very big thing because I fought for this freedom to um, for, with my body entire my life. And I spent a lot of money and risked my life to, you know, have a body that I 
referred to the gender that I always wanted to. And um, when this happens with the partner I was dating at that point of time, it really stuck in my body. And, and then there is this dialogue where I say to my body, I am sorry. And, and I just hold my hand and I kiss, I am sorry. And I do that to the entire of my body and telling that I am sorry that I didn't protect you. And, and that also is so powerful um, for me and also the feedback uh, you know, got by the audience that it is uh, so important to love yourself and, and you're the one who need to protect yourself and it's okay to ask sorry for yourself. Um, and I think the process have been so wonderfully great. Um, well, Shabari helped me uh, at the beginning to choreograph it and um, you know have a proper structure, and I thank her. And and I'm I'm kind of today. One thing I wanted to end with is um, I don't feel my um, you know story anymore. It has been a piece for me. It has been a performance piece and a personal piece. I think I have completely come over from the, uh, you know, trauma that I had with, and it's just a personal piece to tell. Thank you. Thank you, Shilok. I mean, I, I, I remember watching it like uh, in Delhi, and I remember that bit you were mentioning about like, uh, the I'm sorry bit, and. Uh, I think like, you know, we, we really disregard our bodies and we really disregard ourselves. And I, I think it, it, it really needs that love. And I think while watching that, I, I felt the goosebumps, you know, while watching it as well. And uh, in the end, you said something like, um, now it's a performance and it's not that traumatic for me. And I think the more and more you perform, like the more like you're able to see it as like in a pers professional perspective and let go of all the pain and the wound that comes with it. Uh, so with that, like, I would like to move to uh, Labdian uh, with the same question about how was it for you? How uh, personal was your uh, creation for you? And um, did, did, were you able to separate that this is just a performance and this is um, personal? Um, thank you, Akansha. Uh, so I think uh, we worked together as a group and later on you'll hear uh, the others speak as well. Uh, so this for us became a collective piece. Uh, of course, we each had our individual personal uh, investments into it. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to give an introduction to what uh, to what this performance is. And perhaps through this introduction, uh, you, we can figure out what this journey has been for us. Uh, so speak up and act. Uh, when the team got together for this uh, project, we wanted to make sure that with such a topic as dealing with sexual violence and impunity, um, we had to be careful about our approach because it carries with it so much of trauma and shame and fear amongst all these, you know, so many other emotions and challenges. And as Shilok had mentioned, it's, you know, it's a very moving, uh, it's a, it comes from a very deeply personal space. Um, so as we worked together to give space and a voice to what uh, these narratives signified, we came to an understanding that to tell a story is, is empowering, uh, but it also depends on how we tell the story, how this uh, violence and abuse is represented, what and who is the voice behind these narratives. So with Abigail, uh, she used poetry as a means to dissect you know, society's gaze and the everyday abuse that we face and abuse that has unfortunately become so normalized. Um, her second poem examines the story of Beth, a young girl who was sexually abused and tortured by her own father. Um, and through her poem, um, Abigail turns this, uh, this mirror back on the society, uh, on how we consume such stories uh, represented through the media. And uh, oftentimes, you know, it becomes so sensationalized, the, the narrative becomes so sensationalized, and uh, the survivor merely becomes just another data just to you know, advance viewership. Um, and for us, I think this question from her work comes, uh, 
are we losing our humanity in how, you know, in the way these stories are broadcasted, in the way these stories are represented? Uh, Ramchi uh, uses her physical expression to embody the journey of being a victim, striving to become a survivor. Um, we wanted to investigate what these two words um, meant and, and how does one represent this, this very challenging space and, you know, this, this transition of, you know, the word victim to a survivor, which is often so, you know, filled or so fraught with, with guilt, with rejection, with shame, and slowly moving towards healing as a possibility. Um, and it is a vicious cycle and uh, through her work or through the body, this narrative is represented. Uh, with Clyde's piece, uh, he was very clear from the start that he wanted to explore this the psychological space of trauma. Uh, and for him, it's, it's, it's also a space of a male body struggling with abuse. And, you know, very, there's so much of stigma attached to perhaps, you know, you know, as Shilok had also mentioned, as a young boy, how do you talk about abuse? How do you address it? Uh, and this was something that uh, Clyde was very, you know, we had a lot of conversations around this. Um, and for him, you know, portraying this, uh, portraying this mind space via a soundscape using paints and a canvas, he reconnected to artistic elements to that that gave him this opportunity or this space perhaps to, to express trauma without words. And the piece also touches upon a suicide, not as a solution, but, but perhaps as part of the struggle to, uh, to be free or even, you know, maybe to forget. So the personal space uh, for me and, you know, working, working with the team, uh, the personal space is the space wherein we survive. You know, it's it's a personal space. We 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 do not often know how to direct that space or how to articulate that space. But for me, uh, what's important is what are the stories we extract uh, from the space. And once we extract and and you know start telling these stories to an audience, they take on new dimensions. So. Um, just to conclude, I think uh, as artists, our only hope in, in telling stories is to break the stigma of silence and call out, you know, the systemic abuse, the impunity that has taken on such a stronghold within our societies. Because what we constantly remind ourselves is we cannot, we just simply cannot let this be normalized. Thank you, Labdien. And, um very resonate with what you're saying. Now, I would like to move on to uh, Abigail. Uh, Labdian mentioned Abigail's performances and monologues in um, her telling as well. Uh, we won't be able to perform the entire thing. And later in this um, talk, we will attach, uh, we will send uh, a link in the chat box where you'll be able to watch a sh small portion of their performance. But until then, like if we could have Abigail uh, perform a few lines for us uh, from a piece. Uh, uh, thank you, Kongcha. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Abigail. I'll be, uh, I'll be reading a portion from my film, The First Poem, which is about my personal journey and the things I've actually encountered uh, throughout my day-to-day -day life. So, yeah. Here we go. At 13, when I hit my puberty, I was told I am a grown up. You see, at 13, I was told to stop playing with the guys. At 16, I was told to stop behaving like a child. But I thought that was just my childhood time, I guess. At 16, a guy held my hand. I freaked out, so I punched him in the eye. And they said I was violent, so I went home and cried. At 17, I was told no wearing sleeveless because my shoulders would be shown. I would walk home faster down the lane because there was this man on the way who would call girls a beautiful in a very disgusting, cringeworthy way. Once, I was waiting for the bus when a guy was staring at my butt. So I steadily untucked my shirt and pulled down right below my waist while I waited. At 18, 
my friends and I were told no wearing revealing clothes because obviously we were provoking gays because we were asking for it. At 19 in the busy market, a person grabbed my butt and ran away. I froze and then I swore. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Abigail. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I, while like listening to her and listening to other participants, I was also thinking about like how it was for us when we created a performance back in Nepal, and it was obviously very personal, and it, it was named "Personal is Political." And uh, while we um, performed it live in front of an audience, there were obviously a lot of mixed responses. It's a difficult conversation to be had and not everybody uh, is ready to watch that. And of course there was trigger warning and all of that, but it still made people, some, some people felt really held and seen while some people felt really, really challenged. So there was a lot of experiences, but we were uh, really, um, persistent that this conversation needs to be had and that um, our voices cannot be silenced anymore. So that makes me want to go to the next question to maybe Shalok again. Uh, how was it for you? Do you uh, recall uh, in, in connecting with a live audience and you know really and this is your own story and you probably you know even had people you knew in the audience and do you remember any instance while um, or any occurrence uh, that you think of or or any feedback that has impacted you, Shilok? I remember, uh, you know, it was really hard when I, uh, especially when I was doing uh, the show at the, school, at the college where I studied, um, because um, a lot of people were present as well, and and I wasn't sure how you know how they will take it, or it was also very uncomfortable for me to share with the people. I, and also when I did it in my own college where I'm studying right now, um, it was a difficult conversation, and um, and I remember uh, you know every performance I have done so far. Um, there were there were a lot of people who come to me personally and have confessed me that you know something similar they have gone through. So there are men, a lot of men who have came and confessed that you know they have went through something uh, when uh, in their childhood. And thank you for speaking about this. And I remember when I was talking about self rape, um, there was this girl uh, uh, in one of the college who approached me personally and told that, uh, uh, ma'am, I think uh, when I was in relationship, I was going through the same thing. And it, it made me to feel so much insecurity about my own body. And I, fe I felt so suicidal about this. So when I get this kind of confession, I really feel, okay, it is fine to share my personal story in case if, if it's giving, um, you know, that, um, space or uh, that uh, you know safer space to other people to share their theirs and um, and the, as the show name is unraping silence um, it's okay to you know talk about it so yeah okay thank you Shilok and uh, same question for Ranchi like uh, what what was it like performing and connecting to the audience and how did you feel uh, thank you Akansha oh, uh, yeah so um, uh, as a group, uh, the experience of performing in a space where there's audience um, in itself, like it, it gave like a very great impact, and the energy uh, we got from the audience, uh, like the connection between the audience and uh, the play we did, um, and the feedback we got from the audience was like um, was uh, how to say it was really um, powerful. And um, uh, and and each time we perform, um, like personally, uh, I think all of us like personally, we went through this uh, journey of like experiencing like different emotion, um, and also like uh, to see the audience like uh, actually um, you know uh, connecting through a piece, and um, and like uh, like each time. Um, 
each time I perform, uh, like each time I perform, I try to uh, feel or um, or emphasize the trauma of a victim. But um, and uh, of course, it's not it's not easy like to fully understand uh, how a victim undergoes, uh, as I have not like personally experienced uh, like sexual violence. Um, but like uh, like from the audience like who have experienced all that and then they actually trying to connect with a performance uh, and uh, like even after the performance while uh, we were interacting with the audience uh, like some uh, like from the audience some of them uh, they actually came out and uh, like told us about their experiences and uh, uh, there was um, in one of the performance um, I think it was in Sankar like um, from among the audience there was uh, this one um, a uh, one a person who actually um break down like after a performance and it was like um it was like a very um what learning experience for us like you know to to see uh to see people i mean to see the audience like actually um uh, you know connecting with our piece um uh and and even um and even in Clyde's piece like a, a lot of people um a lot of people had like different opinions on um, on how uh, like on how the play was uh, portrayed. Like um, they had like different in, different in, like different interpretation on um, on what we showed uh, in what we showed in Clyde's piece. Um, and I think uh, that's all. Okay, so now I would like to move on to the next part of the conversation. And right now we're in this pandemic and uh, um, everything is like slowly moving digital, like everything, is, the digital space has now become like the new normal and uh, it also has its pros and cons and, you know, um, so just wanted to like, just was curious about like, you know, conversations about sexual violence and impunity. Uh, can can it be had in a digital space uh, also because uh, because we've talked about how we've performed in person and in intimate audiences and uh, among amidst people but what about if we move this conversation into digital space what are the challenges and opportunities that we have and um, I would like to um, request maybe Clyde uh, to answer first uh, Clyde Slide, we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so for me personally, the digital platform has allowed me to put my artwork out there and I've been able to get in touch and collaborate with a lot of independent artists out there and it has become a very healthy environment for me to grow artistically. But there's also this line where you have to distinguish between yourself as a person and as an artist. So you do have to keep separate accounts, one for your art and one for your personal, personal life. And right now, since the digital platform is a one dimensional space, you really need to understand its language. For instance, the social media algorithm for your content to reach a wider audience. And if you study the algorithm and once you follow, the algorithm you are able to so sorry so once you follow this algorithm you are able to reach a wider audience and with that somehow your artwork becomes uh, limited because the audience demand a particular kind of work that they want to see from you as an artist and in that way, you don't have much creative freedom because you do have to cater to a certain audience. But uh, because uh, we are in a pandemic right now and you want, and we are progressing as a society like for technology, towards technology and its advancement, I believe like we should take baby steps, even if we are uncomfortable with the social media platform, we should take baby steps to go forward and try to adopt with this digital platform because 
and you need to understand its language. And in this way, you, you can collaborate with other artists such as videographers, photographers, because they understand the filmic space and the sound space more than us. So in that way, if you want to recreate a scene, for example, where a live performance can evoke different emotions and you want to have something like that exactly in the digital, digital space, these people can really help you create a video where you can really connect with people with the help of sound and video. So in that way, you are also collaborating with other people, you're meeting new, new people and it really helps as a society and as artists, you can help each other out. But for people who are like under a budget or have limits, uh, I think it's best for all of us to just like study a bit maybe about how video and sound really works and how you can connect and edit videos or, you know, photos in that way where you can connect with people. And there are a lot of applications out there where it can help people. Everyone can get, can connect with these applications and create their own things. And as artists right now, we don't, we don't have a choice because of this pandemic. So I think baby steps right now, it's very important. And another thing about social media is that it really does sometimes take its toll on your mental health. So you have to be mentally prepared on what you have, like what you're about to go through. So because once your artwork is out there, it's not your narrative anymore. And you have, it's open to different interpretations and different opinions and many people can criticize. They have all, all sorts of comments on your particular work. So in that case, you have to be prepared on what it's about to come on the unexpected because this is how the digital platform work because as much as it can help and educate us, for example, the Black Lives Movement has helped educate us a lot of things about history and all of this. So in the same way as social media can uplift things, it also has its downside on mental health and, pe on, and people individually. So I think you just have to be prepared when it comes to this platform. Okay, thank you. Thank you for shedding light on so much information. That was quite um, informative, uh, Clyde. Um, I would like to move on to Abigail and then to Shilok um, about the same question. Uh, do you have anything more to add? I think Clyde said pretty much uh, the same stuff I was going to say, but uh, to add up to it, uh, when we look at uh, the social media platforms, like Clyde said, there's the pros and cons, right? So it's 50-50% chances, but uh, I'm personally, I'm very cautious of what I put on social media because uh, once you put something out on the internet, it stays there forever. So you don't know what may happen to that. Those stuff may can uh, be used against us. So of course, there's this 50-50% chances of whether it's a safe space or not. But I agree with like that we should take baby steps, even though if you're not comfortable. So, but digital platforms has this, uh, this because it's a very huge platform and you can reach out to people to a really huge audiences. But, just, uh, but at the same time, we have the trollings, the hackings, a lot of these cons. But let's talk about um, how uh, digital platform has helped during, especially during this time uh, of the, during the time of pandemic. Uh, digital platform has this power of, you know, uh, starting a dialogue. Like the same thing happened when we talk about um, the femicide cases in Turkey. It did give a voice you know, to uh, people, the cases that has been taking place. Of course, there has been this ongoing debate debate whether that it was started in Turkey or not. It doesn't matter. I, I personally feel that it doesn't matter where it started because, you know, we're raising awareness because the same black and white photograph that has been happening since 2016 to raise awareness about breast cancer. So obviously, it doesn't really matter. Personally, I feel that it doesn't matter what, like, where it originated from, but it does matter what it's going to do. Um, it doesn't but yeah, uh, but at the same time, let's talk when we talk about the you know the bad side, the downside of uh, digital platform. Um, these digital platform has really had huge chances of being exploited. Like I mentioned before about the trolling and hacking, right? Which is why we need a filtering system. And right now, we don't really have a good filtering system because uh, I'm referring to the article back that was uh. When, you know, published in 2019 about 
adult perform islaming uh, a social media platform where their posts are being removed and there was nothing wrong about those posts because they were educating people about sex and sex has been the subject about the taboo and there's the stigma that revolves around it that no one wants to, to talk about it so there's another thing about that so yeah whether it's a safe platform or not not yet i'd say not yet it's not a safe platform yet okay thank you abigail and while you were talking i was also thinking about like my i have my own fears about like putting conversations about sexual violence and it's first of all it's very intimate and like you know there's a lot of things that you need to kind of take care of before you actually put it out there 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 comes the issue of consent there comes the issue of like triggering again and um shilok would you like to add more to that like uh, you know what what could be a concern especially with the topic that we're talking about um okay uh, it's it's a very great uh, personally i am not a big fan of you know performing in a social media because as a um, you know a dancer and theater artist i believe in uh, you know uh, receiving the energy from the audience like when they are right in front of you you receive their energy and and then you perform so um and i definitely lack that over uh, you know social media performances um and also a very uh, other important thing especially at this point of time when we are all, when we all are in lockdown uh working from home having a virtual uh, you know work system was a privilege for so many people before but now it has been a necessity for all of us because we all need to survive we all need to you know create our own platforms to voice out and continue the work that we are doing so uh in that way uh, you know as i completely agree with clyde and abigail every point that they mentioned and uh, because um, social media is somewhere unpredictable but you have a greater space to do uh, many impossible things and um and also as uh, akansha you were mentioning about the consent and like you know the fear of um, you know uh, ha having a, a a greater unknown crowd uh, which you do not see is quite a challenging thing because um you can you can be so uh, you know uh, social media shaming is a big thing where people just can shame you for the things that you're speaking or uh, troll you for the conversation that you are you know ready to speak about such sensitive topics so um as uh, clyde was mentioning that you need to be mentally prepared uh, to face all these things and yes and i would conclude this with what abigail said it is 50 50 as it is unpredictable uh, uh, what can happen but it's a space right now that we have for continuing our work and we should use it yeah all right thank you to look and uh, we have a bit of time and we're also like um, please feel free to um, since there are no questions uh, are people allowed to still post questions um since there are very less questions uh, i would like to uh, go back to lab diang and um you watched the link a while ago and um i want uh, if lab diang could like probably talk a bit about uh, uh, what it was like performing uh, with a live audience and uh, what would the difference be if we had to bring that in a digital space lab diang please uh yeah thank you akansha um Yes so uh, as um, you know Shilok as uh, had also mentioned as Rangchi uh, there's a huge uh, we have experienced this performance in interaction with a live audience uh, the piece hasn't sort of gone up on the digital spaces yet but we've uh, we've gone through you know five six different performances of interacting with different people uh, different ages um, you know from different fields um and one thing that that really um going back to what i had said is we're dealing with issues that you know carry so much of trauma stories that are personal stories that that are so uh difficult to even just us having uh, the rehearsals or the workshops you know there were moments when we knew we had to take a break moments when we said okay how do we go ahead and all that so when we had a live space 
um, and it was something that Zuban had also, uh, you know, mentioned uh, throughout the process. When we were performing in a live space, we sort of had, you know, uh, a person, a trained person uh, from from the, you know, from the mental health space, uh, someone, a psychologist, uh, a counselor who was present with us, physically present with us in the space, uh, to help us navigate and understand what the space is, and the interactions, uh, the responses we got from. You know, especially going back uh, to different colleges uh, where we realized that and performing, especially in our own home space, you know, a space that uh, uh, like, for example, for, for Abigail and Rangchi and Clyde to go back to the college that they graduated from, uh, they spent three years of their lives and then to go back and perform this piece to back to their professors, back to their uh, to their classmates was deeply personal, was challenging, uh, but it also opened a dialogue. Uh, and it is a dialogue that I think, for me personally, I'm still trying to understand how do we take this dialogue onto the digital space, you know. Uh, we were there, you know, we felt uh, the presence of everybody together in this space, we, we sort of felt safe. We sort of said, okay, here is a, we have the artists, we have the counselors, we have people in a room, uh, we're talking about this issue, um, we're dealing with it together. Uh, and now when I think of, so, some of my, you know, some of the performances that ha or interviews that I that I have on the digital space as well has, you know, ha I faced like trolling in terms of responses where people are so quick, um, uh, so quick to sort of give their judgments, to pass their judgments, and you sort of suddenly have your opinion about this and that, and how do you protect yourself from that? So. Um, I, I don't know. I, I agree with Clyde that we must take baby steps. It is a platform that uh, we're suddenly, you know, stuffed into because of the pandemic. Uh, it is a platform that still connects. It is a platform to use as dialogue. How we use it, how we let it uh, affect us mentally, you know, psychologically is also is something that needs to be to be looked at. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Labjiang, and uh, that made me think about like an instance, like when the um, in uh, theater circuit here, when the uh, everything was going online in the beginning of the lockdown days and everything in Nepal as well, and uh, so a few friends of ours they initiated this thing called a virtual theater festival, and so a lot of plays at that time started uh, being put online. I mean, as theater artists, we are completely we used to be before this pandemic against this idea of putting live plays online mm. and on YouTube, right? But during this yeah. time, a lot of people did not see an alternative and even national theater and theaters all around the world started putting plays online. And we did that in our uh, Kathagera YouTube channel as well. But I never had the courage to put private is political online. Um, I, I put all my other plays, but this was so deeply personal. And mm -hmm. um, while putting it up and while um, traveling with it uh, over the year, uh, has been so uh, cathartic but very very trauma traumatic as well so um, it's almost like it's like this secret piece that like I don't want anybody to see anymore because I want to protect it also and um, so um, there there are opportunities I I feel there are opportunities like to go online and have conversations online there's this beautiful thing of like bridging uh, community you are able to talk with everybody yeah. around the world and connect with people but at the same time you cannot really control who is your audience anymore right and that is a I think mm -hmm. uh, um, it is a concern uh, for me um, so even now like we are we are going online with an initiative of doing playback theater online and the, here we take people's personal stories and uh, we uh, kind of like uh, play it back to them and it all happens on the zoom platform and it is a independent in initiative that we are following right now but even there like even though uh, we we have not till now um, addressed topics of sexual violence and uh, um, impunity. Uh, we we address lesser, um, uh, you know, intense topics because mm -hmm. those are safer topics. Because uh, when mm -hmm. the stories come, you need to be able to handle it, and you need to be able to cushion it. You need to be able to hold it, hold the space for that story yes. properly, right? And the way you're able to do it live, it is quite risky to to be able to do that online. 
Um, so I just wanted to share that experience as well. And we have one question for Shilok. Uh, uh, if um, I would just like to read it out, like now that you've moved on from the incident, how do you relate to this performance? Since before this, the performance was perhaps also an attempt to come to terms with it. So um, Shilok. Okay. Um... Uh, can you just repeat the question once again, Akansha? I just couldn't get the last line. Um, you are on I, mute. Yeah, I, I think you answered a bit of it while you were presenting about your performance, but now that you've moved on from the incident and whatever happened to you, how do you relate to the performance now? And okay. uh, have, you come to, have, have you come to terms with it? Yes, definitely, because as I actually, uh, uh, already answered that I don't feel uh, anymore, um, you know, I own that, you know, uh, personal story of me. So I have put it out there, uh, you know, publicly and performed so many times. And now, um, you know, it's not anymore I'm talking about my story. Um, it's 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 like you know I take it very professionally and it's just a piece that I'm doing um, and uh, some bits of my personal testimonial and and yeah and it's it's just um, you know nothing it's just completely professional today yeah and um, if you allow me Akansha I just wanted to add one thing that you were speaking about the you know uh, the uh, digital platform. As a theater artist and a dancer, a, you know, performing artist, one thing that we had when we had a physical space is that we own it. We used to own this, uh, our pieces. But when now it is, uh, you know, we are coming to the digital world, um, I don't think so we can own it anymore. Like before we used to have like, you know, no photography, no videography, but we don't know who's gonna, you know, mm -hmm. um, record this and document it and do it. And it's also, I feel somewhere unsafe. I just wanted to point this out as well. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. I absolutely agree. I have the same concerns. And uh, with that, uh, I think uh, we're uh, coming towards the end of this session. But before that, uh, I would like to invite uh, Pragati and Yashashwi from Word Warriors with their poem. And uh, let's hear them. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Pravati and I'm Yashashri uh, and we're going to be performing a poem. It's called In the Broken Paradise. Uh, so this poem is an elegy for all those who have been a victim of sexual harassment in any way. Uh, this poem is a message to all of us uh, present here. It's from a survivor's soul. While performing this poem, all of us are part of a funeral for the departed and we're doing it as the soul speaks to us. Before we start the poem, we would like to give a, give a trigger warning to everyone present here. This poem contains uh, contents, descriptions, and imagery of sexual violence and the feelings accompanying it. If anyone present here thinks that the words and the content can be triggering and has to leave, we understand. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now that I don't have a mouth left to speak with? Can you see me? Can you see me now that my body is turning into flames? Do you feel it too? Do you feel the pain when you inhale the parts of me that were gone long ago? Do you sense it too? Do you sense the agony lingering in the air as my soul hovers over my dead body? Do you see, see him too, too, sneaking away with a smirk slithering amongst your shadows? Am I the only one? Am I the only one? I still recall how I clenched onto my life as my eyelids got heavy. I still taste the world turning sour and my voice getting tired. As my muscles gave up and I felt the life draining out of me. I remember the trust fading away into darkness, ending up in nothingness. I remember the innocence of my childhood shatter as though it was made from glass. I can still recall the confusion rushing through my veins. My heart begging to pause the pain. I still remember the heaviness of his breath take away every ounce of hope that I had left. And as I felt my lungs gasping for life, I, I saw, saw him leave with the same smirk plastered on his face. With a sense of joy in his hungry, sinister eyes. I could feel the triumph he exhaled in the air. As it suffocated the merry existence out of me. He wore my sanity like a crown and walked away like he ruled the place. He boasted his power all over town making me feel utterly powerless 
I could see his broad shoulders widening every moment with pride. As his sense of accomplishment overshadowed my sense of pain, he, he left, left me with so much guilt that my body till today stuck in the same confined space. My frozen, paralyzed self left with nothing and no one to turn to. He sneaked away with that same smirk slithering amongst your shadows. Did you never see him? Was the red on his hands so dull that you just didn't notice it? Or was it so familiar that you learned how to ignore it? Was it that normal to see him moving around freely while I was caged in my body? Me, a prisoner with shackles tied to my feet. I was struggling to stand while he flew right past your side. Did, Did you, you never, never notice? notice? Did you never notice my screams dripping down his fingertips while he walked right beside you? In the tight handshakes and encouraging greetings, the familiarity of his grip. So tight. So aggressive. So, so spiteful. As he led himself back to life. The, the way, way he let, let himself back to life. Was it too dark to see his real face glow up with that malicious pride? Did that vicious streak end up blinding your fierce sight? Did you not see it in his hungry saliva dripping eyes? How his sense of security glowed like diamonds. As he guarded his identity and ensured his invincibility. The way he found the comfort of his safe haven. And smiled under covers and covers of a Apologies. Do you think about how he tripped over the pillars of this society and you didn't let him fall? Instead, stood along while seeing the billion lives collapse underneath. You held him up, but never accountable. As the pitch black night sky lingered over my struggling survival, you were walking with a candle in your hand, mm -hmm. marching for my memory after he erased my existence. Didn't you notice his flames getting brighter as I burned into ashes? Didn't you notice? the fire burning higher with every silence you spoke. And as the warmth of the breeze collided with the heaviness of your silence. As the dark smoke from the burning flame flew past your shadows. I could feel it merge with my pile of ashes and, and carry me away. As the atoms in my body flew above that head held not so high. Encircling that smirk that slithered amongst your shadows. Did you never notice the parts of me latch into your reality? Did you never notice as I walked with you down the sinister paths you created? Did you never see me in the fragmented memories waiting for an answer? Did you never hear me in the tormented silence waiting for an answer? Forever. Always. Waiting, waiting for, for an answer. answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, thank you all for the wonderful discussion and the performances and thank you to the participants as well for joining us today. The recording of this webinar will be put online on our YouTube channel and to view our previous webinars for Through Her Lens, Reframing the Domestic and a Crisis of Care, Feminist Perspectives on the COVID-19 Lockdown and Pandemic in India, you can go to our YouTube channel which will be inserted in the chat box below. Uh, please don't forget to follow us on social media for future event updates and please follow us there and on our YouTube channel. Have a good day and goodbye.